What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about how much of a calorie surplus do you need for gains? But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. So one of the questions I get a lot is, can I gain muscle in a calorie deficit? Do I have to be in a surplus to gain muscle? The answer is not super straightforward, but in general, you don't need to be in a calorie surplus to gain muscle under some certain circumstances. So there was a recent study we kind of looked at a few videos back where they took women and actually did a really great job of matching them for their menstrual cycle. They also made sure their training status was the same. They paired them in terms of training status and they controlled their diets over a short period of time, but had some pretty interesting results. And they were looking at people who were eating in a really significant deficit, like a 50% energy deficit, versus those eating at maintenance. And they showed that in that short of a time frame, they still saw decreases in lean mass in people that were in a deficit. Now it was a very big deficit. It worked out to like 1,000, 1,100 calories a day, but it was really the first study to kind of show this because the big kicker here is they were both getting high amounts of protein. Both groups were getting high protein and had a very good training program. A lot of people have said, hey, it doesn't really matter as long as you get enough protein, you have enough stimulus, uh, you can build muscle. And the reality is those women who were in a deficit built less muscle and they had a decrease in metabolic rate even over that short, I think it was like 10 days or two week time period. And they saw decreases in the basal rates of skeletal muscle protein synthesis. That kind of demonstrates that if we're looking at a pretty severe deficit versus maintenance, maintenance is definitely better for building lean mass. Now, what if they had done a less severe deficit? Who knows? Uh, I'll kind of come back to that in a little bit. But there was a new study done by a few friends of mine, Eric Helms, James Krieger, Brad Dieter, great researchers. And they were looking at, okay, if we're doing maintenance versus a surplus over an eight week time period, in trained people, now when I say trained, they weren't like highly trained. We're talking about men who could bench press like their body weight and squat 1.5 times their body weight. So relative to your average person, pretty strong people, but not exactly like competitive lifters, but still an interesting study. So they put them in the groups where they ate at maintenance in a 5% surplus or in a 15% surplus. They measured quite a few things, including muscle thickness, in various spots. They also looked at one rep max strength on squat and bench press, and they were looking to see, did it matter how much of an energy surplus they were in? And the overall results of this study suggested that it didn't really matter that much. Maintenance made similar gains to the moderate and high calorie surplus group, but they did show that it looked like bench press one rep maximum did increase more in the moderate 5% surplus than at maintenance or at the high maintenance of 15%. So that's interesting. You would kind of expect, you know, maybe the 15% group would be greater than the 5% group. Now I do want to put together a few caveats on these two studies I just talked about. First one was over a very short term. It was like 10 to 14 days. But as we've discussed, it was very highly controlled. And if you want a sufficient number of human subjects and have a lot of control, it's gonna be a short duration. I thought they did a really nice job with the study. I thought it was well done. And I think the muscle protein synthetic data gives us hints of what would have happened over a much longer term when you look at a severe deficit versus maintenance. Now, in this study, they only had like six to seven people per group. They originally started out with 21 people, so there were seven per group, but they had four people drop out. A lot of people say, well, see, that was a garbage study because they didn't have that many people in it. Listen, guys, some of these recent studies were done during COVID protocols and they've just now been published. It was really difficult to recruit subjects during COVID. And I believe this study was done in New Zealand where it's even more difficult to recruit subjects during COVID. And quite frankly, it's difficult to recruit subjects overall for training studies. Uh, I believe they had these people come into the lab three days per week to resistance train with the researchers. Whenever you're having people come in and not just do things on their own, you get less subjects because you're exerting more control. Okay, the more control you try to exert over people's lives, the less subjects you're gonna get. Think about in your day-to-day -day life, would you wanna get poked and prodded, you know, multiple times a week and go in 
to a research lab to train multiple days a week in a way that you don't normally train that's being prescribed by researchers in these tight confined ways where you can't go off program or anything like that. There's just not a lot of people who are willing to do that, especially people who are highly trained. But I do think it does give us a few insights. What I will say is I think a calorie surplus is advantageous if you want to maximize your muscle building. But I think a lot of us have grossly overestimated how much of a surplus we need to be in in order to optimize building muscle. I don't think it's a big surplus. How much? It's hard to say because based on this study, well, just do 5% or maintenance. It's just as good. Yeah, but there wasn't a high subject number. There was a lot of heterogeneity in terms of the results. And what I really want to focus on is in eight weeks, it's really difficult to see differences in muscle thickness based on nutritional interventions only, especially if they're all doing the same resistance training program. Do I think this means that all you need to do is eat at maintenance and you don't need a surplus? I don't think this study shows that, but I think until we have a lot more studies looking at this particular topic, it's gonna to be really difficult to form a consensus of this data. What I will say is they say success leaves clues. If we look at people who are trying to get the most muscular possible, bodybuilders, and we even look at natural bodybuilders, most of them have dedicated times for a surplus. Myself, I know I got my strongest and built the most amount of lean mass during those surpluses. Now, some people would say, well, you could have just done maintenance and recomped your way there. Maybe. But when I started training, I was 140 pounds at about a similar level of body fat that I am at now. Now, I'm 210 pounds. I think it would have been really difficult for me to maintenance my way to 210 pounds at the same level of body fat. So I do think there is room for dedicated phases of gaining and cutting. Now, what I will say is I think for most of us, a slight surplus will do the trick. I don't think you need a 500 calorie per day surplus like the old bodybuilding magazines used to recommend. And you know, I, even I used to recommend it because it's just like, yeah, gain a pound a week. You know, that, that seems like you just pack the muscle on. Uh, I don't think that needs to be done. I don't think it's helpful. And what ends up happening is you add so much body fat that when you've got to take it off, you're probably losing some of that lean mass that you put on from being in that surplus. And there was even a study that wasn't done in resistance trainers where they looked at a 20, 40, or 60% surplus and really found no differences in the gain of lean mass between those groups. But again, those people weren't resistance training. So I think what that says is I would stay anywhere between maintenance and a 20% surplus. I think 20% is probably the absolute highest you should take as a surplus. And when I say 20% or 10% or 5%, what I'm saying is whatever your maintenance calories are, adding that on top of it. So for example, my maintenance calories are about 3,300 calories per day. If I wanted to do a 10% surplus, that means I'd add 330 calories. If I wanted to do, for example, a 5%, I'd add 165 calories, and, and then so on and so forth. I think for most of us, a really modest surplus is the way to go, and you just need to do it for a long period of time. I think what ends up happening with a lot of people that I've observed as a coach, and that we've observed with Carbon Diet Coach people in our group, who are a Facebook group, who use the app, is fat loss requires patience, but muscle gain requires way more patience because you're not seeing the visual outcomes quickly. Whereas if you're losing fat, you know, if you're losing a pound or two a week, you're seeing visual changes relatively quickly, especially as you get leaner, those changes start to accelerate. But when it comes to gaining muscle, you just don't see those for long periods of time. And what tends to happen is when you're eating in a slight surplus, you'll have weeks where you don't gain any weight, don't gain any weight, and then all of a sudden, boom, you gain two pounds. That is very normal for how this stuff works. But what happens is people get really frustrated when they're not gaining weight, they get frustrated by not gaining weight, feel like their gaining phase isn't going quickly enough, and they wanna get through it so they can get back to fat loss and get shredded, brah, and they just start packing in a bunch of calories so they can just hit their weight gain goal and feel like they did it, when in reality, all they did was add a bunch of extra body fat and they go, see, bulking didn't work. No, you screwed it up. Or they don't gain much or they all of a sudden get a bump. They get a two pound bump, a one pound bump or whatever it is. Very normal weight loss and weight gain typically come in chunks. It is not a linear effect typically. And that is normal. 
But when that happens, a lot of people, especially, I'm going to pick on you girls, especially women, tend to jump ship and they go, oh my God, I'm going to gain two pounds a week till the end of time and I've got to get back into a fat loss diet. If you are going to commit to a lean gaining phase, you need to commit to the process. If you're not willing to do it for honestly at least 12 weeks, I wouldn't even bother getting started because it's just going to be a waste of your time. And I'll leave you with this. If you chase two rabbits, you usually catch none. So I recommend small but sustained surpluses over time, interspersed with fat loss phases, shorter fat loss phases to reveal the lean mass that you've built. And that is how the best physique competitors in the world tend to do it. And if you want your physique to look your best, that's what I recommend. And if you need help with this, make sure you download our app, Carbon Diet Coach. You can just plug in your information and tell it you want to do lean gain or reverse diet or maintenance. And we do have fat loss, of course, and it will come up with the optimal surplus based on your targeted rate of gain. So make sure you download the app, plug in your information, and you're getting customized nutritional recommendations for less than $10 a month. You're not going to find a deal like that anywhere else. Tens of thousands use it, love it, and trust us. So click, download, subscribe, links in the description, and I'll catch you guys next week.